Well, let's get a little bit of the news out of the way. Number one, the U.S. Census Bureau has estimated that the world's population has passed 8 billion. Frankly, I never thought I'd ever hear that coming. But of course, uh, I thought the rapture would have taken place before that. But uh, that will happen in God's timing. Of course, there are many fronts on the wars and rumors of wars. Of course, aside from the obvious, which is in the Middle East and also in Russia, there continues to be a long shadow coming out of the East, of course, with Taiwan being threatened by China on a daily basis. And that's probably going to come more into the limelight as the upcoming uh, summit between Biden and Xi take place uh, in the near future. Of course, it's hard to say when that attack will take place, but I, I have no doubt that at some point in time it will. But I'd probably say that it's going to take place before U.S. President Joe Biden leaves office. And frankly, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to leave office once his term is up. He may leave before then. Of course, that is more a rumor than it is actual fact, but it's becoming more and more obvious that uh, he may not be up to the job. And if I were China, I'd try to uh, take advantage of the situation while it lasts. Because it's most likely that Donald Trump is going to win the, the next uh, election. And the window of opportunity for these countries may be closing. But I'd definitely be keeping my eyes open as to see what happens throughout the globe within the window of opportunity of the next year. Because the ride's going to get awfully interesting uh, as a uh, new U.S. leader uh, emerges. And I do believe it'll be Donald Trump. But we'll have to see how it plays out. That may not be what God has in mind. But as I've said many times, really t what you should be looking at is what's going on in Israel right now. Of course, we know that Israel has to keep its mind on the main front, which is uh, in Gaza, but also Hezbollah is threatening them in the north, and we have the Houthis threatening them in the far south. And this is what Benjamin Netanyahu has said most recently. He said that uh, Israel will defy the world if needed to defeat Hamas, and uh, they're probably going to have to rule Gaza for the foreseeable future. So it's going to be quite interesting to see how the world reacts to that. Of course, you know already in the beginning, many of the world leaders were somewhat behind Israel. Reluctantly, I would have to say, but now as time is uh, moving on, much of, if not all, of the Arab world has now lined up against Israel, but not yet to the point that they want to drop their peace. But one thing you're going to need to watch is this right here to see how much patience the United States has with Israel because I don't believe that Israel is going to back down this time. The United States is calling for a ceasefire. The global community is calling for a ceasefire. And of course, the UN is calling for a ceasefire. But you know, I'm just wondering if in fact that at some point the United States is going to insist that there be a ceasefire. And I hope and pray, and I believe it seems like that, I think Israel is actually going to put their foot down and say no. And you know, this may be one of the things that breaks the camel's back as far as the United States being a staunch ally of Israel. They may very well, but this may be the reason why that when the Gog and Magog war does start, that many of the nations, uh, their allies, the United States, uh, Great Britain, and a few others sit back and watch instead of come to their rescue. Russia, Iran, and Turkey and their terrorist proxies may see an opening as to the perfect timing that um, the United States and its allies are no longer willing to come to Israel's uh, rescue. Certainly the Biden administration has never really been behind Israel. It's more of a political move than it is an actual move to protect an ally. I think that the Biden administration will see Israel as an impediment not only to the Middle East, but also to their own interests. And I'm afraid the day is coming that the United States and its allies will finally wipe their hands of Israel and believe that the world, the Middle East, and themselves are better off without them. And at some point, Russia, Iran, and Turkey, and like I said, their, uh, uh, their uh, terrorist allies will time this perfectly. And fr frankly, they'll be correct. But of course, this is the hook that God will place in the mouth of the Russian leader to bring them down upon Israel for an occasion that God can destroy Israel's enemies. Now, the last question I want to pose this right here is that uh, 
Is Israel eventually going to deal with Hezbollah to the north and eventually Iran? Well, let me try to answer that with Scripture. And it says in Ezekiel 38, 11, that when the Gog and Magog war landscape is set, that uh, Israel will be living in a time of safety. Now, one of two things are going to have to happen. Number one, there's going to have to be a Middle East peace of some sort. That's going to have to include Iran, Hezbollah, and also the West Bank. All of these fronts are going to have to be either be eliminated or they're going to have to be clamped down on by their master. Now, also included in this deal would also have to be what I believe to be a uh, peace with many that would include the modern Arab world. And I really have to believe that Iran would either have to be subdued, threatened, or included in this peace process. Now, that's not scenario number one. Scenario number two is that uh, Israel goes ahead and follows through not only with Hamas, takes over the Gaza Strip, but also takes care of Hezbollah and basically takes over Lebanon along with the Golan Heights. And they might even have to go into the West Bank. Now, if they went into the West Bank, that might anger a lot of the Arab community and also the United States. Because the United States still believes in this two-state two state solution. But I believe if they were to go into the West Bank, it would probably be to weed out all terrorists, not necessarily to take it over. But since they are mobilized already, that may be something that they decide to do to go in and completely filter out any type of terrorism that may, may be in the uh, West Bank and just cleanse it. I would be hesitant to think that there would actually be a war. Certainly there would be international protests. The global community would be up in arms over this. But if Israel were to do this, they would have safety within their own walls and borders. But certainly it would be a bold move and would be in defiance to their allies. So could this be the move that uh, Israel chooses to finally rid itself of terrorism, bring safety within its own walls, and meet the criteria of Ezekiel 38? But of course, there could also be a third scenario where just before this is to take place, and what I, mean, what I mean is that just before they do go into the West Bank, that an emergency meeting takes place in which the Arab world declares that they will bring about normalization with Israel and uh, that they would make peace with Israel if, in fact, they do not attack the West Bank. I don't necessarily see that taking place, but Something is going to bring Israel to the table, and something is finally going to bring about a peace with many. Now, those are my possibilities. Uh, if you want to, you can put your belief down in the comment section. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you haven't joined my Gitter account yet, get on that. Just download the Gitter app. Look for the Calvary Prophecy Report or Terry Malone. And then begin to follow me. You'll be getting daily information regarding Bible prophecy analytics for uh, the end times, and just my thoughts on what's going on in the world and how it applies to Bible prophecy. But the most important thing you need to do is if you don't know the Lord today, you need to come to the Lord, ask Him to save you, repent of your sins, believe that He died for your sins, and begin to live for Him from this day forward. And you that are Christians, you need a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. Get it in the hands of every lost person that you know. You know, I always encourage those who listen that they need to act like these are tracks. You need to get these to everyone you know. I'd buy multiple copies. Of course, there is a free version that's written in nine different languages. And let me just say one thing. There are people that I know, or I can tell you right now, who have gotten saved just by reading this book. So you might want to get them this book ahead of time. Just hand it to them. It's a non-confrontational book. Let them read the book. Let them determine if they want to get saved today. But the bottom line is that they'll have this book once the rapture takes place and the tribulation period begins. But I would encourage you to take this approach because this book makes it real and frankly forces a decision. So I hope you'll go down to the description section and you will get multiple copies of this book. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.